Recently, TSMC founder Morris Chang expressed rare concern during the TSMC Employee Movement Conference. He mentioned that Taiwan's current semiconductor advantage will not last for another two to three decades. I believe the semiconductor manufacturing environment in Taiwan will no longer be as favorable, and this is related to government policy development. But he did not further specify which policies might lead to a decline in this advantage. Morris Chang has repeatedly stated in the past that establishing factories in the United States has always been his dream. TSMC now has a significantly stronger workforce, financial resources, and technology compared to 27 or 28 years ago, and with a wealth of experience to draw from, he is determined to realize his dream. In December 2022, a celebration was held at TSMC's semiconductor fabrication plant in Phoenix, Arizona. Senior executives from top global chip companies gathered, and the 91-year-old Morris Chang was also in attendance. According to the plan, the Arizona fabrication plant will officially commence operations in 2024, producing N4 process chips, the same process used for A16 and H100. During the inauguration ceremony, TSMC made a high-profile announcement about constructing a second fabrication plant in the same area, set to produce even more advanced 3 nanometers chips by 2026 with a total investment exceeding $40 billion. President Biden enthusiastically declared, Ladies and gentlemen, American manufacturing is back. However, not long after, the Arizona fabrication plant announced a delay in production. In February of this year, TSMC lamented to the New York Times, pointing out difficulties with American workers. TSMC engineers in the United States said, Americans may refuse new tasks when assigned multiple assignments. Instead of making efforts to complete all tasks, American workers, on the other hand, complained to Business Insider about TSMC's chaotic management, including allegations that Asian workers on the construction site were not wearing safety goggles and gloves, spending an hour in safety inspection queues before starting work each day, and TSMC intentionally not providing workers with accurate job information to distort the skill levels of the Arizona labor force, among other issues. Therefore, Morris Chang is no longer emphasizing his dream of building factories in the United States, but is now directly addressing TSMC's American competitors who enjoy geopolitical advantages, intensifying the unfavorable competitive environment for TSMC's overseas expansions. He also mentioned the advantages of Japan and Singapore, stating that the 12 to 28 nanometers mature process fabrication plant under construction in Kumamoto. Japan is progressing smoothly and is expected to start production in 2024, far ahead of the Arizona fabrication plant in the United States. Morris Chang also discussed competitors such as Samsung, SMIC, and Intel, but in his view, they are not cause for major concern. Samsung invests around $5 billion annually in semiconductor manufacturing, which is a substantial amount, but compared to TSMC's over $300 billion, it's relatively small. Regarding Intel's IDM, Integrated Device Manufacturing, model, which involves designing, manufacturing, and supplying chips, Morris Chang believes that Intel would only pose significant competition if it could offer its foundry customers the same level of service, reliability, scale, and pricing as TSMC. He is not particularly worried about this scenario. As for SMIC's progress in 7 nanometers technology and whether it poses a threat to TSMC's advanced processes. Morris Chang shook his head, indicating that he doesn't see it as a significant threat. In Morris Chang's eyes, the existing competition is not enough to endanger TSMC. So why does he believe that Taiwan's chip manufacturing advantage will disappear in 20 years? I speculate that Morris Chang's concerns may revolve around two factors, first, the impact of TSMC's US expansion, and second, the rising Chinese chip industry behind Huawei's efforts to break free. This concern isn't about companies like Samsung, SMIC or others as competitors, but rather focuses on the shift in the entire chip ecosystem and industry chain. Regarding the US expansion, he directly pointed out that TSMC is facing challenges due to the geopolitical advantage held by the United States, intensifying the competitive environment for TSMC's overseas expansion. Currently, TSMC's Arizona chip fabrication plant is falling behind schedule and has seen repeated conflicts with American labor unions. According to a report by The Information, TSMC's U.S. plant manufactures high-end chips for major clients like Apple, NVIDIA, and Tesla, but these advanced chips still need to be sent back to Taiwan for packaging, incurring significant costs. TSMC has no plans to build chip packaging plants in the United States. Due to various difficulties, the current costs of setting up and operating plants in the United States have increased by 300%.
It was reported long ago that TSMC's U.S. factory had recorded losses of up to $7 billion, and the actual losses may be much higher. This has led to continuous delays in the U.S. expansion. JP Morgan analysts have identified four key reasons for the delays in TSMC's U.S. factory. Difficulties in equipment installation, challenges in finding skilled labor, uncertainty or delays in funding related to the CHIP Act, and overall weak demand for advanced processes. Even in this situation, TSMC is still being pressured by U.S. state governors to expand its operations. With every dollar TSMC invests in the U.S., the crisis gets closer. Morris Chang had predicted a long time ago that TSMC's establishment of factories in the United States would be a fruitless endeavor. The current situation seems to align with his earlier forecast. With the conclusion of the U.S. expansion being less than fruitful, TSMC is now in urgent need of growth in the Chinese mainland market. This is why TSMC has sought an extension of the exemption period for its Nanjing plant by one year, and is looking to further apply for an indefinite exemption to operate in mainland China. TSMC is eagerly looking to leverage mainland China's resources, talent, and policies to support its chip plants in Taiwan and the United States. According to data, in the first half of this year, TSMC's revenue decreased by 13.7% compared to the previous year, while TSMC's Nanjing revenue surged by 57.1%. In contrast, SMIC's revenue decreased by 13.3%. This indicates that in the global downturn of the chip market, the operation of TSMC's Nanjing plant has been highly successful. However, despite this success, the mainland Chinese market is only a short-term bonus for TSMC. The trend is for the mainland market's chip production capacity and manufacturing process to advance further. Taiwan's semiconductor industry has not yet established its own supply chain, ecosystem, or chip development capabilities. Its primary focus has been on contract manufacturing. Currently, in the market for processes below 7 nanometers, Taiwan's semiconductor industry relies heavily on a few customers like Qualcomm and Apple. The demand for orders from these companies is declining, and this downward trend is expected to accelerate in the coming years. The US-initiated trade war and export restrictions have artificially changed the world's consensus on open global supply chains. In the tech industry, Fueled by concerns about the chip supply chain, not only Taiwan but also mainland China, Europe, Japan, and South Korea are all expanding their chip fabrication plants. Today, there is a severe overcapacity in chip production. According to industry insiders, in the past two years, about 20 chip fabrication plants have started construction worldwide, with at least 10 already completed. By 2024 to 2025, the global chip market is expected to become extremely competitive. Due to the barriers and market restrictions imposed by the United States, more than 80% of the 14 nanometers chip market has been overtaken by mainland Chinese chip manufacturers. Following the release of the Huawei Mate 60 series, TSMC's market value has already dropped by $77 billion, but this is just the beginning. In the realm of chip manufacturing processes, breaking through from 0 to 1 is a significant achievement, and the progress from 1 to N is only a matter of time. Furthermore, the world is already researching chip production methods that don't rely on photolithography but instead utilize printing. This breakthrough is already happening. TSMC's cause for concern isn't really the next 20 years, but rather the next 3 to 5 years. TSMC's dominance could completely disappear within just 5 to 8 years. Currently, the only place experiencing rapid growth in the global chip industry is TSMC's Nanjing plant. This serves as both a lifeline for TSMC and a critical component in undermining the mainland Chinese chip industry. TSMC's establishment of a plant in mainland China, utilizing the region's resources, talent, and policies, allows for large-scale dumping, effectively suppressing the growth of mainland Chinese chip enterprises. However, everyone is well aware of this situation, and countermeasures will undoubtedly be taken. TSMC alone cannot alter the bigger picture. In the coming years, the chip industry's competition will largely be market-driven, and the biggest consumer market for chips is in China. The battle for China's mainland market will be the focus of global efforts. Behind Huawei's push to break free is, in fact, the rise of the Chinese chip industry, drawing a parallel with the Chinese new energy vehicle market. When the entire supply chain is in China and the nation is leading the direction of innovation, is there fear of competition from others? Of course, the issue of dumping competition will be a major concern in the next phase. Industry insiders worry that if TSMC engages in dumping, 
the already established chip plants will eventually be squeezed out due to lower prices, posing a greater threat to the Chinese chip industry. TSMC's request for an indefinite exemption from the United States is undoubtedly aimed at safeguarding its own market position rather than promoting the development of the mainland Chinese chip industry. Its only opportunity at present is to use this window of time to participate in the dumping of mature processes on the mainland. Morris Chang's concerns may stem from the fact that TSMC's advantage in manufacturing processes is short-term, whereas mainland China's vast market advantage, resource advantage, talent advantage, and ecosystem advantage are poised to rise rapidly. The pace of development seems to be faster than what Morris Chang had predicted. In the past, Morris Chang accurately estimated that it would take about five to six years for the mainland to break through the 7 nanometers process. However, currently, it only takes four years to achieve this breakthrough, indicating his clear vision as a scientist about the industry's development. As of now, Morris Chang predicts that TSMC's advantage will disappear in 20 years, but given the current development trends, TSMC's advantage may erode in approximately five to eight years. We shall watch and wait.